your time has come to wake up to who you really are and not who you or what you think you are. Instead of working toward trying to become something or someone, you need to know and understand the foundation that you are starting with. Stay tuned to find out what that foundation is and how to build a successful life. Hi, my name is Yvette Rose, author of Metaphysical Anatomy and welcome to today's topic which is creating what you want and I'm going to share with you five hot tips how to accomplish that. Now during my live events I teach my students the power of imagination and how it's actually connected accurately to tapping into your consciousness and to create the most powerful healing work. But first, you need to know and understand and meet your true self in order to really truly know how to fully move forward with this concept. Now that is, if you want lasting results. When you create what you want, you cannot build a house on a foundation and assume that there is no weakness in the foundation of the soil. But you need to understand what the foundation is. And now in this case, that foundation is your mindset. And you need to understand what your mindset is made up of before you continue to build on it and with it. Now, if you are numb towards your sense of self, then that is probably why, you know, you're going to be trying to take steps that's changed to change your life, but it's not necessarily going to work for you. Now, that is because those new steps that you're trying to take are not in alignment with where you are at in your actual reality. Now, it's not in alignment with where you need to be and also perhaps moving into because what you think you need, right? What you think you need to be doing or achieving is now perhaps based on lack. It could be based on a wounded identity. And now your goals and your desires are now not built on a solid, confident and clear foundation. Now, in order to really truly find yourself and to create what it is that you want, you really have to truly start to detox your mind from who you think you need to be. I repeat, you need to detox your mind from who you think you need to be. You need to detox your mind from you know, all these projections and actions from people towards you because those actions and words that were negative and those projections, that, that became your relationship with yourself. But remember earlier when I told you how I teach my students the power of imagination? Why is something that we associate with daydreaming now suddenly so powerful? Or has it always been powerful and we just didn't know how to use the benefit of it from to its fullest potential and understanding it to its fullest extent? Now it's through an intention, whether it is conscious or subconscious, that you start to tap into your imagination. Now, thoughts are propelled forward as electrical surges throughout neural pathways. And then these thoughts are now moving through neural pathways, setting off in motion electromagnetic fields that are then created. Now, this brings power and movement to your consciousness. And through this deep non-local field, our electromagnetic field can have an effect on matter in your environment which explains why you can sense when someone is also unhappy, though they don't show it. It is through this process that you can create an electromagnetic field energy and movement that is now with an intention toward an intended action. And this is then brought to life. It is through intention and imagination that you bring emotional and sentimental value to your intention and also ultimately your manifestations. Now, I'm referring here to imagination in the positive sense, and I'm also sure that you can perhaps relate to, you know, the more negative side of it, right? Especially the negative side of imagination, because always thinking the worst case of scenarios there, putting yourself down is there, you know, having debates in your, with your imagination, going back and forth, having arguments, right? So in order to really understand yourself better, it begs the question, where is your dominant focus of your imagination in general. Now, every time when you change your imagination of yourself, you change your dynamic with your reality. You change your interaction with your environment and then also how it responds to you. Now, your attitude can also diminish 
completely diminish the action that you take. And then now you can also be as proactive in your goals as you want to be, right? But if you're now going to create it with a negative mind, especially with a negative mindset, or perhaps say even feeling resentful, right? Or that you feel that you can't achieve it or that you're, that, that mindset right there in itself already is destroying your future path. You're destroying the path that you're trying to create simultaneously. Right? So your mindset toward your abilities as you take action can now either empower or disempower the impact of your intended creations. So now you see how easily and quickly you can become the hamster in the wheel. Right? You become so busy taking action, but at the same time, you're also busy ruining the path that you're trying to lay out in your future. Now, I hope that explains a lot as to why you feel challenged creating what you want instead of consciously creating what you want and what you are and what you want to become. Now, everything that you do starts with your imagination, right? In today's society, we see imagination as something that's like related to fiction, you know, it's related to thoughts that's just not achievable. Now, imagination here is also used for when you, for example, wanted to get out of bed first thing in the morning to go to the restroom. Right? You're so used to envisioning yourself waking up and going to the restroom that it's not even a conscious thought. Right? It's not a conscious imagination thought form. It just happens. And the reason for this is that you have done so many times, so many times that it's become second nature to you. Now, it is just normal, right? Just think about it, you know? What if you could have that same smooth, conscious imagination towards your goals, right? Especially towards your goals. And now that follows through just as smoothly with the intended action. Let's backtrack, right? Let's backtrack. Let's say going to the fridge when you feel like snacking. You see yourself going to the fridge. You open the door and the curiosity of what could be in the fridge to eat drives you to take action. As you know that you might, you know, have an unmet need that's now perhaps nurturing. And now you would like to have food. Sounds funny, right? But listen, listen, because it is very important. This is so important in order for you to really, truly start living a conscious life. You have a desire for something because you feel an absence of something in your life. And now a desire is then put into action through intention and imagination. Now, it is your process of imagination that can greatly impact the outcome of your reality. Now, if you really closely evaluate your patterns, you will see that there is a high chance that you have become a slave to your subconscious mind and your imagination. They are all running on autopilot now. Thought processes, imagination and taking action has become such an unconscious process and routine in your life that you probably now have lost control and power over it in the sense of consciously controlling how successful you want the outcome to be, right? So especially when it concerns you in terms of reaching your goal. Now, when you live so subconsciously, you lose conscious power of the thought and the imagination. And instead, your fears are now driving critical aspects of your reality. And that is why you become a prisoner of your own mind. Right? You become lazy in your thinking and you just believe everything that you dream up, which in this case now are negative thoughts, right? projections that's now as a result of subconscious imaginations. But that imaginative thought becomes your reality because these negative thoughts now align you also with people right? and with circumstances that will cause you, that will be an emotional frequency match to your thoughts. It's so automated that you just accept it once it comes into your mind. Instead of actually consciously being proactive and then changing it and then thinking and energizing something more constructive, something that's more positive. Now, this is what I call unfocused imagination. Whereas focused imagination is where you have so much more power and also conscious control over what it is that you want to create. Now, if you imagine yourself being not good enough, being unworthy, feeling appreciated, then perfect, right? That is who you have just become. If you imagine yourself to be a good character, to be, have a positive influence over people's life and to be a positive person, then excellent. That is exactly who you now have just become. 
Now, other people's judgment is also irrelevant, but it only becomes relevant when your power of thought gives it relevance and importance. You see my point, right? Regardless of your past, if you decide consciously every day who and what you are going to become, you decide then how you are going to show up in the world, right? You decide then how much power people are going to have in your life by purely just imagining it happening and then you believe it and then you live your life accordingly. Now you can imagine emotional resources, meaning feelings that you might never have experienced in your life. However, the fact that you can have a desire for it mean, listen closely, it means that those resources are in your biological makeup. You cannot desire something if you don't have an earlier biological reference for it. Right? It's a matter of now just reigniting that again. So here it begs the question, do you have awareness of your current emotions and not just desired emotions? So do you have awareness of what you are creating every day in your life and the impact of it? Or are you so busy trying to cope around it? Right? Do you have an awareness of what you really truly want? Do you have an awareness of what is holding you back in your life? Right? Do you see the answers to these questions are fundamental? Lack of awareness creates confusion, loss of confidence and also certainty as to what you would be doing or needing to do. Now, even if you are on a journey to somewhere in your life, have meaning behind it, right? Conscious focus and conscious imagination behind it. The way to create meaning in life is to have awareness of what it is that you're trying to achieve, right? And then also the motivation behind it, whether it's positive or negative. Now, if you cannot imagine yourself as the new perceived change self, then how and where are you going to start creating positive changes in your life, right? Just a desire alone is not enough. You need to believe that you can become what it is that you want to be. You need to be able to feel what it is that you want to do, attract, right? So if you, for example, hate something about yourself, then you lock yourself, then you lock yourself into that consciousness state. You lock it now into your reality. Now, instead of you just being past, instead of it like, for example, just being like a passing thought, it now forms part of your consciousness. And if you let go of holding on to something negative, you release it from your consciousness and then it will reflect into your reality. Then also attraction and, your, and also from your environment. And now I want to share five tips with you to have powerful awareness and how to speed up your ability now to create what it is that you want. Step one, everyone is trying to find themselves, right? You're trying to find yourself as well, but you know what? There you are, right? You're already there. Now the only shift that you need, the only shift that you need to happen now is for you to shift your awareness to the fact that you are made up of the enlightenment that you are searching for. Step number two, Realize as of right now that your physical body and your ego gives you the illusion that you are absent from the enlightenment that you desire, right? And I say enlightenment because it is through our wish fulfilled that we feel and connect to the feeling of enlightenment, feeling connected to the ability and the feeling of competency that we can do and create what we want. Now, this is also just the highest expression of consciousness, right? And now also the intelligence that it holds, I don't mean intelligence in the sense of IQ, but, but I'm now what I'm meaning is here is but holding all the collective wisdom and the experiences of the world, right? If you can't accept that, then you need to stop wondering why you are suffering in your life because that is exactly the reason why. Step number three, you suffer because you think you believe that you are destined for nothingness when in fact you are already made up of everything that you need. It's a matter now of perception. It is a matter of imagination and a desire to tap back into the feeling and also that feeling of aliveness that is part of you, right? You always have been destined for greatness and the potential is alive in you. What are you going to do about it? Step number four, I know that there is an area in your life where you are disciplined, right? I know it's there. Now, what will your life look like if you held that same amount of discipline towards your happiness? 
Can you imagine the power that you already have in some area of your life? And now you can just redirect that same level of discipline to creating happiness, to creating what it is that you want. And now step five, feel the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Right? Feel the feeling of what your goals will be once they are achieved. Right? And once your needs are met. And let that now become your new imaginative default thinking process. So, also guys, what you can do is you can check out my videos, how to rewire your brain as well. And I have many other videos about manifesting. So, until next time, be the light that you are. Hi guys, thank you for joining me and remember to grab your copy of Metaphysical Anatomy on Amazon 679 Medical Element and I also wrote about the psychosomatic root causes of that and I'm spoiling it because I even added key points for you to start looking at important questions that you can ask yourself to start improving your quality of life and also remember to catch me on Instagram Yvette Rose one with the digit one and Metaphysical Anatomy on our Facebook fan page. Bye guys!